you in. Uh, Mary, has the president expressed any new or regret about his proposal to send civilians in space? The president is, is obviously concerned about uh, every person that he as the chief uh, executive officer of the government is he is the president directs uh, he directs people every day uh, either directly or indirectly uh, to conduct missions on the part of the of the government the military nasa and those uh, it's a fact of life when the man sits in the oval office he has to make these decisions and um, i have not heard him express any regret concern yes deep emotion yes sorrow yes uh, but um, Regret is not, uh, is, is, is not that. It was a decision made, as he said, these individuals are all Americans, um, and they're all believers in the space program, and uh, that's what's in his mind. So, Walter? Larry, does the president plan today to speak with any of the relatives, family of any of the... Uh, that hasn't been stuff? determined yet, no. Frank? Uh, can you give us any indication as to what the First Lady was doing uh, at the time that this information became available and what no. her reaction was? I don't. We can, uh, we can check with her office, if you will, and see what we can, can get. Because the Europeans are able to put up satellites in unmanned, uh, with unmanned vehicles, uh, doesn't this accident argue per se that unmanned vehicles are a preferable way to put up satellites in, in orbit? Uh, once again, uh, you know, I have been a a silent observer of the space program and not one that's actively involved and I'm not confident to answer that. So. Uh, as you recall, the president made the decision to send a teacher into space. Uh, can you tell us on what he based that decision and who suggested the timing and when the time was right for that uh, uh, mission? Well, Mike, I, I don't want to come down hard on you, but, uh, but the What's in the president's mind right now is to find out what happened and to show those families of those people that he's concerned. Um, and that's all that's on his mind at the moment. Um, are, are you operating on the assumption that this is the result of some technological problem? And, or has, has anyone suggested the possibility it might be an act of terrorism? The, um, there have been no suggestions either way. Thank you. This was, of course, this uh, disastrous accident uh, this morning, the first in-air disaster or fatal accident uh, that NASA has experienced. Uh, it's uh, the only other time when uh, astronauts have been killed as part of a space program was actually on the ground uh, back in 1967 on a launch pad explosion as part of the Apollo program. Three astronauts uh, died in that accident after 16 previous successful missions. Lieutenant Colonel Virgil Grissom, Lieutenant Colonel Edward White, and Lieutenant Commander Roger Chaffee were all killed on Apollo flight. It was flight 204. One of the people who witnessed that and was taking a careful notice of same is uh, Robert Wuffler, who is an executive here with Turner Broadcasting and working for a former network, another network formerly, in uh, January of 1967, was the executive producer of special events and was covering this as it happened. Can you tell us uh, th the reaction at the time back in 1967 to the tragedy? Well, Marianne, it was a different time. It was a different age. Um, uh, the individual astronauts, there were only uh, 15 or 18 at the time, uh, active astronauts, the original seven of whom two were not flying at the time, and a second class of, I believe, about 12, from which um, Roger Chaffee and Ed White had come from, uh, the public was much more familiar with them. It was truly, uh, there's a good picture of Gus Grissom right now, Ed White, uh, the first man to walk in space uh, for this country, Roger Chaffee right there, the rookie on the flight. Uh, scenes of their uh, memorable funeral procession in Washington and at Arlington National Cemetery, scenes that I remember quite well. A different time because the individual astronauts were known so much, more, uh, so much better than, of course, the, the astronauts of today. There were fewer of them, there were fewer flights. Each one was a major newsworthy uh, event of its time. The news of the, it, of the accident on the pad at Cape Canaveral on that historic Friday, uh, last week in January, almost the same date uh, of today, 19 years ago, 
uh, spread like wildfire among the news media throughout uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida, Cape Canaveral, and the New York Network News Centers. Uh, at that time, uh, in the NASA space program, uh, there was very heavy security uh, throughout the, uh, the Cape Canaveral Center, uh, Cape Kennedy, uh, and uh, there were no newsmen on the Cape at the time of the accident. The accident took place about 6.30 at night. We began to hear that there were problems sometime around 7 o'clock or 7.30, and it was not until about 8 p.m. at night that NASA finally uh, made an announcement that there had been an accident. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, the three astronauts at the time were killed instantly. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I was taken to the pad area about seven days after the accident, and it is still one of the more horrific uh, memories of, uh, of my days as a newsman. We have been getting to know um, all through this morning and early this afternoon the, the seven crew members aboard the Challenger who are believed to have been killed in this terrible accident. Can you tell us something about the, these three astronauts well, of course, who were uh, the first to be killed in it? Certainly. Uh, I think Gus Grissom uh, was well portrayed in the motion picture The Right Stuff, uh, which was, of course, about the lives of the seven original astronauts, the Mercury astronauts, as they were referred to, the famous uh, Life magazine photograph when they were announced uh, back in the late 50s and, the, and their, their progress towards a manned launching in 1961. Alan Shepard was our first astronaut in space for the United States, that having come on May the 3rd, 1951. Gus Grissom was our second astronaut. He went into space, I believe the date was a mid-July date in 1961. Uh, he had some problems on that flight. Uh, a spacecraft problem um, happened after his suborbital flight, and a helicopter came along to pick him, to pick he and his capsule up, uh, it flooded with water, the capsule was lost, Grissom was saved, uh, and there were, uh, there were investigations after the fact as to exactly what happened. Nothing was ever proven or disproven with regard to uh, uh, why that capsule was lost. Um, uh, Ed White, um, a very popular astronaut, our first um, walker in space on a Gemini flight in June of 1965 and Roger Chaffee regarded to be one of the brightest of the young astronauts. There was probably a very good chance that those two astronauts would have uh, gone to the moon, certainly on Apollo 11, our first flight, or, or shortly thereafter. Uh, three very popular astronauts. It delayed the space program at the time for some 12 or 18 months until we finally got back on the road in 1968 and culminating with a successful lunar landing in July of 1969. And again, uh, and again, NASA is saying today that it could be months before another space shuttle will be able to be launched because of the, until they figure out exactly what happened. Well, certainly it's going to take uh, a long time to investigate the difficulties of today. Thank you very much, Robert Wessler, who is the executive producer of special events for CBS when the accident occurred killing our astronauts in 1967. Bob? Marianne, among the people watching the launch, preparations for it, and then the launch itself at Kennedy Space Center this morning, First with tremendous pride and excitement, and then in absolute disbelieving horror were Mr. and Mrs. Edward Corrigan, Edward and Grace Corrigan, the parents of Krista Corrigan McAuliffe, who was just about to become this country's and the world's first teacher in space. It was just last month that Mr. and Mrs. Corrigan spoke with our correspondent, Tony Clark. What was it like when Krista was, uh, was selected? How did you all feel? <laughs> Great. <laughs> excited. Very excited. You all going to be at the Cape? Naturally, we wouldn't miss it. <laughs> yes, the whole family will be there. We have four other children besides Krista, so everybody will be there. Is this really like her? I mean, is, when, when yes. Absolutely. Let's do, no let's change. do this one at a time. Ms. Corgan, does, does, did it surprise you, first, that she would, would try to be an astronaut and then be selected? Uh, no on both. I know an awful lot of luck was involved in it, but I'm not surprised because I knew she'd do a good job if she were chosen, and I'm just so pleased that she was chosen. Uh, What's she like growing up? The same as she is now, as she comes over now. Exactly the same. She hasn't really changed. But to people that, that don't know her and, and all they know is just what they've seen on TV, how would you, how would you describe your daughter, the, your daughter, the teacher astronaut? Oh, a very caring, outgoing excited, um, interested. I would think as, as father, this is just, I mean, you just gotta be really proud. Yeah. I mean, that's 
absolutely proud. What what do you hope that, that she gets out of this or is able to, to give others out of this? Mm -hmm. is, is there something that she can pass on to others? Or? Well, I think that we hope the same as what she's hoping to bring back uh, when she talks about demystifying space and to come back and let all the other people know that it's uh, not just scientists up there that uh, for the future everybody will be into space and I think that's what she hopes to bring back to her children and to the teachers and to everybody in general. How has she been just in, in talking to you all about the training and everything? Totally excited. I mean she she never goes down low about anything. She's uh, truly right with it all the time. She loves what she's doing. She, no complaints. But she's got that kind of a disposition anyway. She doesn't complain. I imagine you all are looking forward to that point where she comes back and just tells you everything. Yes. <laughs> and to have her back, too. <laughs>